Today we're looking at the Physics uh, AS Unit 2 paper from SIA, the 2016 one from June, and uh, it's Waves, Photons and Medical. Question 5. A student positions a monochromatic light source X in front of a single slit S1 and a double slit S2, S3, as shown in figure 5.1, in order to produce coherent sources. An interference pattern of bright and dark fringes is observed on the screen. Question A1. What is meant by coherent sources? And that's just straight book work from your notes. Waves from coherent sources have a constant phase relationship. So state two additional conditions that must exist for an observable observable sorry interference pattern so to answer this we have to think about well what causes an interference pattern and it's destructive interference now for destructive interference to happen what has to be true about the two sources well they have to have similar amplitudes and in the setup above that would mean that these slits uh, would have to be similar uh, thicknesses so that one doesn't produce stronger waves than the other. Um, so similar amplitudes and in order to see an interference pattern you would need to be able to see the contrast between the bright bits and the dark bits. So having your room uh, darkened in, in so that you can see the difference between the bright bits and the dark bits would also be important. So light from the two sources must have similar amplitudes and that would also be achieved by making sure that you had equal slit width. And as we said before, you'd want the room darkened to improve the contrast between the bright and the dark fringes. Part B1. A dark fringe indicates that destructive interference has occurred. In terms of path difference, state the condition that must be met for complete destructive interference. Now remember what happens in destructive interference. You've got one wave arriving with its trough at the same time as another wave is arriving with its peak. And the idea is that this downward vector is being cancelled at least partially by an equal or almost equal upward vector. Now they'll be equal if the amplitudes are the same, but if the amplitudes are only similar, it won't be complete destructive interference. But this will happen when the waves go half a lambda out of phase, or one and a half lambdas, or two and a half lambdas, or three and a half lambdas, so it's like an uh, odd number of half lambdas. So the generalized equation for that is that the path difference will be n plus a half in a bracket times lambda. So that will give us the half lambda, one and a half lambda, two and a half lambda, three and a half lambda that we need for destructive. It has to be an odd number of half lambdas because if you get an even number of half lambdas, then that's a number of whole lambdas which will get you back to constructive interference so there has to be all this always this little spare bit of half a lambda to get destructive interference part two the center bright fringe is formed at position p located along the center line and it's midway between s2 and s3 as shown in figure 5.1 the third dark fringe from p occurs at position Q when the path difference between the light coming in from S2 and S3 is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Calculate the wavelength of the light source. First we need to have a look at that diagram. So here's that picture again. And it says the bright fringe is here and it says the third dark fringe is here. So that's the third dark. It's 
So there's first dark right next to the bright one here. Second dark will be here. So that's our arrangement. We've got bright fringes here. And so we've got a third dark fringe. So we can look at how that relates to our little equation. So we've got path difference equal to n plus a half lambda. So this first one will be where n is naught and the path difference is just half a lambda. This will be where n is 1. And this will be where n is equal to 2. So I've just added those n values to the diagram to help you see what's going on. So with n equal to naught, that's half a lambda out of phase. That's the first time they go completely out into antiphase. And that'll cause destructive interference. n equal to 1, that's 1 and a half lambda. And that'll create antiphase again. n equal to 2, that's 2 and a half lambda. And that's the one where we're getting this difference. So we can substitute into this equation because they've given us the path difference here at that position. And then we just rearrange that to get a lambda value. 1.38 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 2.5 will give us our lambda. And I'm getting this value of 0.00000552. which is like 5.52 nanometers or 5.52 times 10 to the minus 7. And they want it in meters, so that's what we'll do. Question 6. A music enthusiast attends a music concert but arrives too late to gain admission to the auditorium for the beginning of the concert. He is asked to wait in a room outside and is disappointed to find that he is seated to the left of an open doorway. He can hear the concert but can't see the orchestra playing on stage. This is shown schematically in figure 6.1. So we've got our orchestra, this is the main auditorium, and we've got on our unhappy customer here, and this is the open doorway. So hearing is happening like this. Explain in terms of diffraction why he can still hear the music despite not being able to see the orchestra playing it. Now, this question is more than a little dodgy, and I'll explain after I talk about what the mark scheme says. Okay, so the mark scheme says that what's going on here is that the wavelength belonging to the sound is much greater than the wavelength belonging to the light. And therefore, the diffraction of the door is going to be greatest for uh, the bigger wavelengths, and not significant for the tiny wavelengths associated with light. Uh, so the diffraction of the sound through the door is going to be much greater than the diffraction of the light. And that's fair enough, but it does not really answer the question because the question refers to being able to see the orchestra and hear the orchestra. And those are two totally different things. What is hearing? Hearing is a sequence of vibrations that arrive at your ear in a predetermined order that then will correspond to the sound. Now that can happen just by them heading towards you in the right sequence. Uh, where they came from doesn't matter. Now if you correspond that to what would happen if the light was diffracting off this edge, that would correspond to a little... Um, lightening of the edge. You would, you would see light on the edge of this doorway. You would never be able to reconstruct that into an image. 
So you'll never be able to see the orchestra, even if you had shrunk this gap down to a slit that was the right size for light to diffract. You would only ever perceive a, a slit of light coming towards you. You would never be able to turn that back into where that light came from in this auditorium. And how it got to your eye from there. So you're never going to be able to see the orchestra, even if we get the diffraction working. And it's important to understand the difference, especially if you're writing an A-level exam question. Part B. A signal generator is linked to both a speaker and a cathode ray oscilloscope. The sound emitted from the speaker has a frequency of 5 kHz, and the trace on the cathode ray oscilloscope is shown at figure 6.2. The grid on the screen is divided into centimetres. Take the correct box corresponding to the time base setting on the cathode ray oscilloscope and show your working clearly. So these times will relate to the period and the period here you can see is four squares on this oscilloscope. So we need to relate that to the numbers they gave us at the top of the page. So we've got a frequency of 5 kilohertz, so we can turn that into a period because um, t equals 1 over f. And so 1 over f is 1 over 5,000, 5 kilohertz, 5,000 hertz. So that gives us a value of, so 1 over 5,000 is not point not 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 two of a second. That means that this is not point not 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 two of a second. And if four squares are giving us point oh 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 two, then one square must be not point not 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 five. And that corresponds to fifty microseconds. So now we need to see if that corresponds to anything in the table that we've got. So do we have 50 microseconds anywhere? Yes, we do.